Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I've got something exciting to share with you that I've been working on over the last several weeks. And uh, I'm titling this presentation, Sharing Science, uh, Fostering Better International Understanding. So it's the 15th of March, 2019. Now, from the get-go, the MFMP's goals were, as you can see on our archived site here, to have three aims. And the number one was to show the world there is a new practical primary energy source we called a new fire. Well, whether we do that or we didn't, we need to be a catalyst to doing that. And we have tried to be a catalyst. And we continue to try and uh, be a catalyst and to achieve that first aim. Uh, number two is once shown, help develop people's understanding of what the new fire is. And this particular uh, presentation and the aim of it uh, is to try and um, uh, fulfill a little bit more of the goal two and goal three, which is help promote the development and uptake of new fire in all its uh, various guises. So. Um, what is it? Well, I have been talking to Alexander Parkamov over the last month, and I thought it would be quite important to get a translation done of his book. And uh, so essentially, it's a th about a 300 page book. He says it's uh, very popular in Russia. And uh, what we've done is uh, we've gone through a very rigorous process to see if this is a possibility. And uh, having um, got to a point where uh, we think it's going to work. We are approaching the crowd to see if they would like this to happen. Now, essentially, the book is, uh, I've translated the front cover here, which is Alexander Parkamov, Space Earth Man, New Facets of Science. Uh, so, and he has this little kind of a diagram on the front page. I just want to read you the back page of the book. And uh, here it is in Russian, and here's my sort of... Uh, uh, translation, Alexander Georgievich Parkamov graduated from the Moscow Engineering Physics Institute and then worked at its Department of Radiation Physics. He led a research team at the Moscow Aviation Institute, which studied the properties of ultra-low energy neutrinos. He was professor of the International Slavic Academy, head of the laboratory department Rhythms and Fluctuation of the Institute for Sur Research, the Nature of Time, and he's got a web address there. And he's the author or co-author of over 130 scientific publications. And then he says something here. Dark matter research from the time of its discovery was really only of interest to astronomers, cosmologists, and exotic scientists. In recent years, however, after the accumulation of a critical mass of knowledge, it has become clear that this is not just an elusive substance dissolved in an infinite universe, but that it is an important source of connections between space and the biosphere. We are accustomed to the fact that influence, influencing the course of processes implies changing their speed or in, intensity. This, in essence, is the basis for all modern technology. Apparently, however, there is an other type of process variability which manifests itself in the change in the order of behavior of the system's parts. This can occur regardless of energy changes. Perhaps searching in this direction will allow us to overcome the crisis in modern natural science and open up the possibility of a new level of knowledge about the world in which we live. So that's the blurb on the back of the book. And uh, it's quite inspirational to me. And, uh, you know, when I translated that, I thought, I really, really want to read the whole of this book. And it's very painful to go through it page by page and attempting to translate it and whatever. And I think that this is really important that a greater audience gets to read this, uh, what Alexander says is a popular book. OK, so the process so far, uh, well, I've done some... Uh, uh, testing a machine translation over the last several years, translating pap papers, and I realized when I did the um, Mashinsky paper, the long Mashinsky paper, it took me like three or four weeks to do, and that, that was tough, man. Uh, and uh, um, really, uh, machine translation is not realistic, uh, particularly if you lose so something like uh, Google. It gets the technical aspects sometimes right, but the, the syntax, uh, the grammar is often garbage and you have to work very hard both forward and backward to work out what's, what it's actually trying to say. And if you use something like DPAL, well, DPAL, 
it, it does kind of like more chatty language. I think uh, people have used it for translating conversations on social networks and so so forth. And it's neural net essentially when you give it uh, pieces of text from uh, this particular book sometimes it can sound like uh, your friend talking in, in the nightclub about something they did on a holiday um so it's it's really not that practical well um we worked with a uh, uh, about 20 experienced translators and uh, uh found a, a couple of uh, viable uh, persons that have both uh, experience uh, needed in in both native russian and uh, fluent english and um uh really it's going it's going to be better to work with those uh in uh, an individual that's capable of, of doing a, a human translation um uh but uh, the use of computer assisted translation tools uh will help the translation of other documents in the future because you get something called a translation memory and that uh also uh, you have a glossary of terms and so when it comes to translating scientific papers in the future in this area it will be uh, beneficial so um so we established that machine machine translation alone is not realistic computer assisted translation tools will help translation of other documents in the future I interviewed over 20 experienced translators and we've established a fair price for the uh, quality human translation work and we've established the full process from the source word document provided to us by Alexander Parkamov to beautifully formatted reflowable ebooks and printed layouts and what do i mean by that well uh, uh essentially people like to read documents uh, on the go they don't necessarily have a, uh, a connection to the internet um, and this will allow people to view the document here's a an example of a, a translated segment uh, in english on an iphone on an ipad this is on a uh, um, amazon kindle uh, and this is a printed version and i can take you to uh, this lovely tool called Vellum, and just show you a view. This is uh, on the um, uh, Kindle. Uh, the new Kindles are high resolution, 300 uh, points per inch. But uh, we'll take you through this so you can see how everything kind of looks on the Kindle, uh, so forth. And you've got the graphics there and so forth. And if we drop through to, say, for instance, uh, an iPad, uh, we've got to look at what it looks like on an iPad. Uh, so you can see a bit of color on the iPad and you can see uh, on for instance uh, in print here uh, you've got the, sort of the uh, title of the book up there in the section here and uh, it looks beautiful in print as well so we worked out the entire process to do this and uh, if you actually look here uh, this is the original document in Russian, as provided by Alexander Parkamov, and uh, this is uh, the translation of a section of it. And if I just go uh, through this, uh, you can see there's a Russian. The PDF on the right hasn't been fully formatted, so uh, you, but it's just for get an idea uh, of where we are with it. Um, Anyway, so um, going back to the presentation, so we've established how to produce it uh, to look good on a wide range of formats. So the costs to translate the book, it's 60,000 words at the moment, uh, and translating that using an experienced philologist with human translation native in Russian and fluent in English in contact with the author, i.e. Um, if there's any problems, uh, the Russian native translator can speak to Alexander and say, look, you know, I, I'm having a bit of an issue here with this. Is, it, is this the right, am, am I getting the right sense here? And then put that into the translation memory. Um, proofreading with a native English speaker, conversant in the subject. I confess that's likely to be me. Um, but uh, using computer-assisted translation tools to help maintain formatting and to build translation memory and glossary for future translation work in the field. Uh, that is around $5,500. Uh, that's really the best we can do to get this done properly. 
um, you can go and have a look on the online services to see if you can get anything better with a 60,000 word uh, uh, document and it's got 80 images in there as well. Uh, layout for ebook and print formats including remastering of images. Uh, you can see that uh, there's already been some remastering of some of the images there, $1,000. Fulfillment cost is dependent on rewards chosen, and I'll come on to that uh, later. And then the Kickstarter fee uh, is 9% of money raised. So uh, the sort of target we want to achieve for the Kickstarter is $7,000. Um, now, the Kickstarter rewards were based around journal article prices, and this is from a, a link document here. Um, Essentially, journals are typically from sort of thirty to thirty-five dollars per article. We've often bought articles uh, in the project. Uh, for instance, if you take an article from Nature, it's going to cost you thirty-two dollars, and it might only be three or four pages. It might be five or six pages, but we're, we're talking a three hundred page book here. So, this is kind of what we're basing it on, and. Um, so the rewards based on the typical cost of a scientific paper. Um, there are some scientific papers you can get uh, for under thirty dollars. So we're, we're essentially saying that if you assist us, there'll be a reward uh, at twenty five dollars uh, the digital version of the book. And Park, Alexander Parkhamov has sanctioned that. Uh, the um, uh, th this may be a, a unique book, i.e., you will actually get a book which is like. You can't edit it, and it will have your name in in that particular copy of the book. Um, uh, the uh, $65 level will allow for a digital copy of the book and a print version of the book. And so we're looking at the price of roughly two articles. Uh, and the $100 mark uh, will be both a digital and a print version. And you'll get your name in the back of the book uh, to say thank you very much for being a big supporter of the work. And uh, for those that really want to make this happen and uh, want something unique uh, for posterity, uh, Alexander Parkhamov has agreed to uh, sign five copies of the book. And uh, you can give $800 and above uh, if you wish to help uh, the project more. You can give more. That's the way Kickstarter works. Uh, but there will only be five um, uh, chances to get uh, all of the above. Uh, plus, uh, Alexander uh, Parkhamov will ha sign the inside sleeve. And this might have to happen when uh, and or if uh, I uh, get to the Russian conference this year. So... Uh, in summary, the benefits are help a wider understanding of research in this area. Uh, the latest data from Parkhamov will be included in the book. So the current Russian book uh, is a number of years old. And he has said that he will have the latest data in this new uh, English uh, edition. Uh, the translation memory and glossary of terms made available to enable better translation of related papers in the future. So... This process that we're going through, uh, I will produce videos on so that you can learn how to translate from Russian uh, papers. And uh, the glossary of terms and the translation memory will be made available so uh, people can actually um, uh, use that in future to uh, uh, do a better translation of uh, papers in this field and support research in this field. So uh, in two couple of ways, it's going to support it. The money raised over and above the 7,000 target uh, will enable uh, myself to travel to uh, Moscow and visit the five labs, uh, private labs, and the two government labs that I was invited to visit. And of course, uh, I will do my best to uh, report on those as fully as, uh, fullest as possible. So this is not just uh, creating a book, potentially, if we hit, hit above that $7,000 level, then it will help support that trip. And then the book itself, the proceeds of that will uh, help be split between uh, helping uh, our side research in, in the field and, and also uh, to uh, help uh, Alexander Parkhamov with his work. So we're going to split the ongoing proceeds from sales 
outside of this Kickstarter in the various formats that people might want it. So that's it from me. Um, I really hope you're excited to learn about Alexander's um, book and his uh, great experience in the field of ultra low energy neutrinos. Uh, you know, normal nuclear processes typically are uh, achieved uh, in a fission reactor by a neutral uh, um, uh, particle called a neutron, uh, uh, so it doesn't have to uh, have the problem of the Coulomb barrier. Uh, and uh, as P Alexander Parkhamov has shown in his latest paper, uh, he's proposing that uh, neutrinos of an ultra-low energy nature uh, that he's obviously studied for an extremely long time, can be synthesized in a reactor like he had in, in the um, uh, well, 1.2 gram reactor that produced uh, something like 2 uh, mega electron volts per atom uh, energy yield. Um, he's saying that that can be produced by uh, uh, electrons interacting with each other and producing these ultra-low uh, energy neutrinos at a... Uh, um, at temperatures of over, say, 2,000 Kelvin, uh, which he achieved in his reactor. So anyway, um, uh, this for me is really exciting. I hope you're excited about it. it this book isn't just about the um, uh, stimulated uh, acceleration of uh, radiation uh, 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 decay rates. So, for instance, he did studies uh, over multiple decades of uh, cobalt-60, of uh, plutonium-239, uh, strontium-90, for instance, um, and showed that uh, uh, ultra-low uh, new energy neutrino flux uh, caused by gravitational lensing of the Earth and the Moon uh, caused some acceleration in the decay of those, or changes in the rate of the decay of those uh, element isotopes. And... Uh, you can see just from this section here, if I go to, to the English one here, uh, yeah, he's got the moon here, and uh, maybe if I can zoom in on that, can I zoom in on that? Yeah, so this diagram here, uh, the moon and the earth here, and he's talking about uh, uh, the the neutrino sphere of the sun, he's got the neutrino sphere of the earth, and, and so on. So. I think you're going to find this book extremely fascinating for all of those people that are into low energy nuclear reactions and that are also into uh, uh, cosmology and also those that want to know the relationship, as he says, uh, between uh, space, earth and man. And as he says here, uh, that uh, there is some sort of relationship between uh, the dark matter and uh, its interaction between uh, uh, space and the biosphere or its facilitation of an interaction between space and the biosphere. So thank you very much for listening. Please support this Kickstarter. Uh, this is a preliminary to the community to see if you have got some suggestions maybe on, you know, the, the if there was a particular reward kind that you don't see here uh, that you think uh, would help this project go forward. Um, let me know and uh, we could put it in as a reward but I'm hoping to launch the Kickstarter next week and I hope that you can support the translation of Space Earth Man New Facets in Science by Alexander Parkhamov.